Welcome to this episode of Video Drone, and look what we have in the house again today. We've got the Up Air One Plus. Yes, the Plus. This is the new one, folks. So, I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing on this um, and share with you guys as I unbox it a little bit why I've got one of these in. So, uh, first off, I'm kind of curious. The box looks maybe a little bit bigger than the original Up Air One. And so it's about nah, a little over 18 and a half by say 13 and a half, and it is nine inches tall. So it's a good size box um, for this. Now um, this is, I think, a little bit different from at least from the picture. It looks a little bit different from the original Up Air one. Uh, I believe there's been like three generations. So there was the original Up Air. And there was the Up Air One. Now this is the Up Air One Plus. This one uses the um, smartphone or tablet, kind of like the Phantom Three. Um, so now um, this is by Gen 10 Drone. Uh, these guys have actually been pretty good. When I've had my first one uh, and I had a problem with it, they were very good at helping me. So again, this one's got all the typical stuff you'd expect: auto return to home and. Uh, Accurate positioning, auto balancing, life is good. So let's go ahead and open up the box. But don't they all have auto balancing? I don't know. That's why they put gyros. So let's go ahead and open this up and let's see what magic rests inside. So this looks like the atypical up air internal box. We got this nice packing checklist that they did this QA based upon it. See it down here at the bottom. We'll set this aside. And we have our English and Mandarin instructions when the aircraft is powered on. That's atypical. And we got our instruction manuals. And we now have to remove this cover. And here we go, folks. Here it is. Now, this appears to be a little dusty, which is always interesting. How can it be a little bit dusty? Um, kind of interesting. The compass cable is kind of pulled out of the... Uh, arm. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why that is. Because uh, one of the things that I, I saw, I want to remove this. So the gimbal and camera assembly is different. Um, then it's still a, it's still a two axis. It's not a three axis like the the up air. It does have a protective covering on the camera, which uh, probably needs to be removed. And it's got the SD card. Just kind of looking it over. Big difference in the transmitter assembly here. In the original up air, um, seems to be some kind of protective cover on the the battery, so I'll take that out. Also, it looks like some kind of connector, um, like an I2C bus or something like that. There, um, kind of interesting. So, huh? Well, I tell you what, let's get all this stuff out of the box. But the stuff inside here is dusty. I'm a little bit perplexed by that. Also, I don't know if that intended to ship like that. Well, I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and get this out of the box and put it on the uh, desk and it'll be easier to see. Okay, so here we are back. We've got everything taken out. Now, a couple things. Pretty much a lot of this looks like the uh, original up here. I like the fact they give you some ad additional rubber shocks. Now, one of the things I am going to do before flying this is do my atypical, um, put a zip strip through here because as my first one, uh, got destroyed because it basically pulled this whole assembly out and didn't need to. Now there are clips in here that are supposed to hold it but it didn't do a very good job. Now one of the pieces I, it does appear, this, this does appear to be a different uh, gimbal setup than the last one. Now I don't know if you can <clears throat> see this but in the last one it appeared that the it had a system where the wires ran inside or the connectors. This one runs on the outside, so this is a little bit different assembly um, than the last one. And the camera kind of rotates or pulls this uh, wire, and it looks like you know two brushless uh, motors here. Uh, and again, this is hugely different. I'm just sitting down the battery over here. This is hugely different. Uh, there were heat problems with the other, uh, with the Up Air One, um, and this is a huge heat sink, uh, which makes it pretty heavy. I'm interested to see maybe a little bit how much all this does weigh. Um, the other pieces is the camera. Uh, I don't know if you. Can, I think you can see it. So I, instead of holding steady, kind of 
tilts out, this should be balanced a little bit better. I'm going to have to take a look at that. I'm sure that when some motors engage, it'll stabilize itself. Um, but typically in the back here, in the back of the camera, there's a weight, and it's uh, intended to be put on there so it becomes balanced. So I'm going to have to take a look at that, maybe. I'm still perplexed why this is pulled out. It might just be a manufacturing piece, but zip strip or something along there should be fine. Um, everything else looks pretty much the same. I think it's got a little bit different stance, and the other piece is, is when this comes down like this, this does hit the bottom because I don't know if this is kind of... Uh, long enough to show and I think it is but you see this is very close to the bottom surface so the legs I think are a little bit different than I remember them on the original up here um, or the original up here one the battery seems to be pretty much the same same type configuration and everything so it doesn't look like too much changed in the battery uh, and then the remote controller is pretty much the same they've gone with the lolly, what I call the lollipop antennas rather than the round antennas. Um, and you have your atypical and you got the battery port in the back and the same type of configuration on the controller, the buying button here, <clears throat> self-centering sticks. You know, the big difference is, is this kind of funky little clip here that's supposed to do something. So you definitely won't get a tablet in this guy. So you're just going to get maybe a larger phone, which is okay. Now the pieces, as I understand it, I think I got to double check this, but I believe with Android you need to use an OTG cable plugged into here, and you can do Wi-Fi with iOS only. Now, personally, I prefer the OTG route uh, to the wireless, and so that's how I use it. But I don't see that it came with an OTG cable, so I think you're going to have to provide your own if you want to use this with Android. I haven't found one in the box. So I do have a set of props, so I've got one complete set with an extra of each. So one set with an extra of each, so not two full sets of props. We've got the battery for the uh, up air controller, so typical still same type of configuration the last time around. So pretty much most of this all looks the same. Uh, you have to provide your own SD card uh, in here, so this looks interesting. I now, there still has the port on the side of the camera. Now, I don't know if that will connect to, I believe they're probably still using the storm controller. Now, one of the pieces I notice inside is it looks like you can disassemble this. I see screws to remove this cover. You might recall on the original up here one, I did a, a piece where I cut this open uh, with a saw uh, because it was, you know, annealed shut, if you will. But it looks like they've made that a little bit different. Um, and again, this gimbal is quite a bit different than the last one. Uh, they had, and the last one had used what looked like to be some sort of what we I would call a white metal or some kind of alloy. Uh, this is all plastic. This gimbal is now all plastic. The base, the arm here, um, the counterarm. So be forewarned a little bit about this. Um, striking anything with this is, is assuredly going to cause you some grief um, with this. So you have to be very, very careful. So I think I'm going to work up some sort of gimbal guard to protect this and maybe even do some riser feet. Um, it's interesting, it's got the MAC address right on the side here, so uh, that's interesting. I, I wonder if they didn't beef this up for the telemetry, um, because in the original one, the way it worked is it had the monitor, the screen here was simply a monitor all the OSD or on-screen display came from the copter itself and was displayed here. This had no logic in it at all. In this version, it has built-in logic inside the app to um, to do things just like the, the, the Phantom 3 or the Mavic or Spark or any of that does. So this is really closer to the 3. Now I picked this up for around 300 bucks off of Amazon and one of the pieces, I decided to give it a try um, again because one of the reasons I really my first up air was great big thumbs up second up air I got after I crashed my first I was very unhappy with um, because it lacks stability and one of the, the big things I, I um, relate that to is the originals version of lack of compass calibration and I think that's really key now this guy you can calibrate the compass on or at least that's what it indicates in the instructions so I'm gonna do a complete video on calibrating the compass of the up air uh, one plus 
and then I'm going to also do some videos on the application and flying with the application and anything I run across because again I think for 300 bucks this is a real interesting copter and, and I'm hoping the fact that um, maybe they've addressed some of their quality control issues although I'm, I'm a little bit nervous that it was so dusty when I took it out of the, the package that um, uh, again maybe not so I don't know if they're manufacturing the next automotive transmissions or not in China um, Shenzhen is an interesting place if you've never been there I been there a few times uh, but it gets um, kind of interesting anyways um, everything's here so everything seems to work pretty good and I kinda want to share a little bit of my thinking and unboxing and again I, I'm encouraged that this has the ability to calibrate the compass separately uh, that I'll get better performance out of it than I did the prior up air uh, that I had before so with that um, Again, I think I'll close out this video because I'm going to try to get this ready to fly and you'll see some more videos coming. So, hey, if you got one of these, let me know what, what you think about it down below. Um, also, you know, follow along. The subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. And I think this is going to be a bologna sandwich for lunch, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.